Thanks for the intro, Jeff, and welcome everybody to Perceive 2020. I'm super excited for today. It's been a long uh, time coming. We've always wanted to do a conference and we're excited to bring it to you in 2020. And I think it's a perfect timing because you're going to see today a whole suite of new products that we've been working on over the last several years that are now available for you to play with. And one of the big reasons we want to bring together this event was to foster a community around artificial intelligence where businesses and public sector organizations can learn and collaborate and really achieve their missions of accelerating their digital transformations with AI. And so to do that, we've brought together a rockstar team of speakers from all different uh, walks of life around the AI ecosystem. These include executives at public sector organizations and commercial entities, investors that have deep uh, entrenches in, in artificial intelligence, and research scientists at leading organizations uh, in artificial intelligence. And so to give you a bit of background about us, we're going to uh, start with a, a quick overview of Clarify. Uh, Jeff covered a lot of it, so I'll be brief here. I founded the company at the end of 2013 after doing my PhD in AI at New York University. That's why we ended up being headquartered in New York City and now have grown to have offices around the globe. We have an office outside of Washington, DC, San Francisco, and Tallinn, Estonia. And from that research background of my PhD, I always knew innovation was gonna be key to clarify success. And that's why we developed an awesome research team that has over 140,000 citations at this point in scientific fields. And that's what's led our uh, investments uh, in uh, our seed series A and series B from great investors, uh, starting with strategics like Qualcomm, NVIDIA, and Google in our seed round, LDB and Osage and early stages as well. And then our lead investors, Menlo Ventures, Union Square Ventures, and Lux Capital. And to date, we've raised over $40 million. So there's lots of interest in what we're doing and the value that our customers are seeing is tremendous. And that really started from the ImageNet win that uh, Jeff talked about. But most recently, we've won the leadership position in Forrester's new wave report for a computer vision platform. That was a great stamp of approval from a third party independent where we're the only startup in the leadership position. Um, so we are very excited about that. And it really stems from our, our platform. The Clarify platform has evolved to become an end-to-end -end deep learning platform for unstructured data. And that includes images, video, and now text. We're mostly known for computer vision, but we're very excited to have launched natural language processing over the last couple months. And we're excited to show you some new advances in that today. When we talk about the platform, it's now uh, really all of the building blocks you need for the complete AI lifecycle. And that starts with your data. This is the data that's important to your business, images, video, or text. To make use of that data, you really need it annotated so that artificial intelligence can learn from it. This is where a brand new product, Scribe, comes into play. It's built for scalable labeling of data for training AI models. All that data needs to be managed though. You can't just uh, have a huge amount of data and make use of it. You wanna be able to slice and dice it to make the most use of it. And that's where space-time search comes in. It searches over both where things are within uh, images and video and when things appear within those videos. Uh, the next stage of life cycle is to leverage that data to learn from it. That's where a suite of products uh, we call Enlight comes into play. That lets you train models and make building blocks to do more complex building uh, with some workflows that you'll hear about in a second. Now, once you've trained those models, you need to run those models at full production scale. This is where Armada comes into play. We've built this from the ground up to handle thousands of models across thousands of machines so that you never have to think about deploying models again. Now, a single model can do so much. We want to actually solve real business problems with artificial intelligence. And that's where Mesh comes in, where you can chain together arbitrary graphs of models and other building blocks to be able to do more with our platform. All of this runs in the cloud, and it's not just one cloud. We run across all the major public clouds, AWS, Azure, and TCP. We're the only uh, vendor that can do this, as well as bare metal, including air-gapped environments where there's no connection to the internet, which is very important in scenarios like public sector being deployed out into the field. And then the last thing we're going to talk about today, which is super exciting, is a new product called Flare, 
which brings artificial intelligence out to the edge. So you're not constrained to cloud environment. You can do processing locally on cameras, mobile devices, and other edge uh, computation devices. And this together collectively makes our AI fabric, where all this cloud and edge processing works seamlessly together. So I'm going to walk you through this uh, today in relatively this order. So Scribe, we started as an AI platform. We never had data labeling capabilities, and now we do. So when we approached building Scribe, we wanted to make sure that artificial intelligence was built throughout Scribe in every possible way. This includes assisting the humans doing the work. We want to make them as efficient as possible, allowing AI to take over and fill in labels for them as they're doing the work. But that's only limited to how much work can be done by a human still um, to be assisted in real time. So we also have auto annotation workflows. These allow you to take an AI model and run it over massive amounts of data with no human involvement, trusting predictions that are very confident and sending predictions that are less confident to humans to review. All the user interfaces are built from the ground up to make the humans that interact with them, whether they're labeling or reviewing, to be as efficient as possible. So that when we do have a subset of the data that does appear to humans, they're very efficient at getting through it. And this, uh, these user interfaces alone, we've seen to give over 10 times speed up over unoptimized user interfaces. But once you combine with auto annotation, that's where the order, there's multiple orders of magnitude of speed improvements versus humans doing the work themselves. And that's why we're super excited to start with an AI uh, approach to data labeling. And this allows you to scale your labeling projects to any size. There's no constraints and any size of workforce as well. And then most importantly, you're doing the labeling in your AI platform. You don't have to send your data to someone else, get it back, figure out how to organize it for a different format, send it into a different platform to do search, different platform to train on it, different platform to predict with it. It's all one platform seamlessly integrated together. So that's a huge advantage of using Scribe within Clarify. But today we're not announcing just Scribe. We're announcing a whole new service called Scribe Label Force. So we have the Labeler product and we have Label Force to take care of annotation for you. So Labeler, Scribe Labeler is built for your workforce. This is important in scenarios where you might have experts that need to do the annotation. They could be doctors in the healthcare industry. They could be Air Force pilots in public sector. These people are experts, but you need to make sure that these highly educated individuals aren't wasting time on the annotation process. You want to make that very efficient, assist them with artificial intelligence, have optimized user interfaces, and automate as much as possible. So that's what Labeler is built for, your workforce that you're managing. You can annotate images and video with classification, bounding boxes, polygons, and leverage all the AI that is built into the Clarify platform. Now, Label Force is where you don't want to think about a workforce. You just want your data labeled. That's where we take over for you. Upload your data to the platform, and you get it back labeled with high quantity and high quality annotations. And this is very affordable as well. We wanted to make it cheap enough that you can use this and trust it when you're building your artificial intelligence applications, starting at eight cents per input and eight cents per annotation. As you scale with us in our enterprise contracts, you get volume discounts as well. So it's as simple as uploading the data through API, user interface, creating a job with instructions on what the worker should do, and then you'll get it back with high quality data. And we have a lot of quality assurance built in so that we manage the workforce, uh, make sure the quality is very high and make sure multiple workers are reviewing things to be consistent. So let's take a look at what Scribe looks like. So here is Scribe Labeler. This is what the label force will use or if you're managing your own workforce, you can use with them directly. In this scenario, we have a few shots of people in parks. And we want to annotate some concepts you see on the top right, like cyclist, dog walker, jogger, uh, rollerblader, walker. These concepts have hotkeys. You can see one, two, three, four, five along the side to make it easy for you to annotate that specific concept without having to click. What you're seeing here is we also have image manipulation tools. So you can change the brightness, uh, saturation, invert the colors, zoom and pan all very easily in the user interface. This is really important when you have difficult scenarios where it might be a, a grainy image, low resolution image, small objects, infrared imagery, which is all natively supported in our platform. And here there's additional uh, tools built in for video. So let's say we wanna annotate a jogger. We drew a box at the first frame of the video. 
Then we jump all the way to the end of the video and adjust that same box. And then we jump around in the middle just to make sure that in the middle of the video, we adjust the box to where the runner is at at that point in time. And that's all we have to do. If you hit play from the start, uh, again, it has interpolated all of the boxes throughout the video based on those key points you provided. So this makes the annotation process of a human doing the work orders of magnitude faster when you're annotating video. So we're super excited about all the tools built in to optimize the human in uh, Scribe. Now, as I said, we don't want to just have humans do the work. We want to leverage artificial intelligence to assist them. So here you're going to see a similar type of uh, annotation task, but with a model assisting the process. This model, you can see uh, on the top right, is called test, and it can recognize these different concepts. So it's a, a pre-trained model for this task. Now, the concepts uh, are predicted with a confidence score, and we can determine two different thresholds, a high threshold and a low threshold. If the confidence is above that high threshold, like in this case, running, then it's going to suggest that running is a concept. When you hit submit, it actually records that to the database as if uh, you did the work yourself. So it assisted you in having to not have to draw bounding boxes and label all these things. Now, the low concept also allows you to say this is not rollerblading in this scenario. It's below 0.71 threshold, and so we're going to mark it as a negative example of rollerblading. Then this is free to uh, add additional boxes from the human as well, like you saw at the end. We drew the uh, dog walking box, uh, even though the artificial intelligence did not predict that. So this allows you to start with a model that might be uh, somewhat accurate, helps you get a assistance on the labeling task, create more labels, retrain that model, and then apply that to the next labeling job. And you can have that whole complete loop uh, automated within the Clarify platform. You don't have to move around. You don't have to script anything. It's all completely uh, built with no code necessary. So that's Scribe. We're very excited to introduce Scribe Labeler and Scribe Label Force today. Now, you have all this data. You've just labeled it. You've uploaded it to the platform. How do you find all the important parts of that huge data set that you have in the platform? This is where search comes into play. And we call it space-time search because we've introduced uh, search in 2016. Uh, but the functionality in 2016 was really understanding the overall scene and recognizing things like running or dog or, or stuff like that. But you weren't able to search over video. You weren't able to localize where things are in an image or video frame. And so now we've introduced both spatial location search. So you can find where specifically the dog is out of any of your images or video frames. And then when it appears in temporal content like video. And so hence the name space time. So you can use this to manage that data set that you're going to use throughout the platform, whether it's for uh, labeling it, for training on it, evaluating models on it. Uh, searches become uh, a crucial component to organizing your data. We allow you to rank and filter it, sort by different criteria, like the human annotations, AI predictions, uh, geo coordinates even, and much more. You can even save these searches. So you configure your search, you find exactly what you're looking at, and then share it with a collaborator in your applications. This allows you to kind of scale up the, the team efforts as you're building artificial intelligence. But you can also use those saved searches to designate the labels uh, or the data that you want to label, train on, and evaluate. So search is kind of a focal point of a platform, and it's necessary when your data becomes very large. And when you think about uh, all the devices that are generating data today, every problem is becoming a big data problem. And so search becomes a necessity. As I mentioned, we have the localization to find objects and people within your data. Video search find when they appear. And we have the ability to do not just search by you know, the predictions and human annotations, but by visual search which is the idea that you can find stuff that looks visually similar, even though you might not have categorized it previously. And this enables completely new experiences like similar product search or even check-in of, of individuals that you might not understand their name. Uh, and then with uh, some of the custom training that you'll see in the next section, you can actually leverage all of these custom train models to search immediately over your data without having to re-index it. This is something we've patented. It's incredibly powerful because if you think of the thing that you're trying to train into the model as a personalized preference of a user and then searching for that preference over a whole data set, you can actually build a, a real-time recommendation system that doesn't need context from the user. It learns about its behavior in real time. 
and uh, it doesn't have to re-index in, in bulk processing. So we're very excited to have both training and search integrated into a, a cohesive platform to enable new experiences like recommenders. Now we're gonna take a look at some of these experiences and the uses of space-time search. So here is an example where you might be out in the wild, you love that backpack, you take a shot of it and you wanna buy it. You wanna find out where it's available, how much it costs. So you take that picture and using visual search, we find things that are visually similar. This is kind of a nice uh, marketing example, but let's take a look at how it works in practice in our platform. So here we have an app full of images. These could be you know, your friend's vacation pictures and they have that backpack that you wanna, uh, that you like and you wanna buy. So with the apparel detection model, we automatically recognize where in the picture the backpacks are and index them. And then we can provide search functionality, not just within the same app, but within other apps. So this might be a search over a uh, retailer's product catalog. And here we automatically match the exact same bag uh, provided by Gregory. And if we go look at the whole search results, you can see it matched multiple different uh, angles of that bag and then kind of a continuum of visually similar bags uh, from Gregory. So this is the experience that you can build by having localized search within an overall scene. If you were to take the overall shot, you might get brewery pictures, you might get you know hats or something like that back. But with localized search, you can focus on exactly the backpack that was detected and find what you're looking for. That's the power of space-time search. Now, it's also really powerful for managing your data. And in this example, you're gonna see us build a trailer truck. There's actually gonna be a breakout session um, later today where you're gonna dive deep on this example uh, at uh, 11.45 uh, right after the keynote. And you're gonna learn how to train uh, these trailer trucks exactly what, like I'm gonna show here. And the way that, that uh, starts is uh, leveraging search. So here we have a bunch of traffic camera uh, footage where it is uh, vehicles driving down highways. And we have some pre-built models provided by Clarify that recognize vehicles. They detect where those vehicles are and draw bounding boxes. So that's what you're seeing here with the blue boxes uh, depicted on the screen. As you uh, change uh, some of the images, you'll see it detects a lot of the vehicles, if not all of them that are uh, visual in the picture. So that's great because that means we can actually start breaking down this overall scene into the individual components. And so we should be able to find, now that we've indexed all the data, trucks that look similar to this. So here's kind of a nicer zoomed in shot of a trailer truck that we're interested in training a model for. And given that we can detect that vehicle, it doesn't know yet that it's a trailer truck, we can use that as a search query. So if you hit that button, it puts the trailer truck into the search bar and it finds things that look visually similar. Again, it has no idea what a trailer truck is at this point. And so this is really powerful because I have actually discovered a bunch of examples of trailer trucks. If you zoom in on all those, they are actually trailer trucks. This is what I want to train a model for. And so now that I have a whole grid of these search results, I can select them and then label them uh, however I want them. And in this case, I'm gonna uh, grab the whole grid because they all seem relevant. And then I'm gonna click on the, the label selection as, and then type in trailer truck, a brand new concept the system doesn't know anything about yet. And so you can see here, it's actually grabbing 50 of these uh, retrieved search results, and I'm gonna label all of them trailer truck. After I do that, it's gonna increase the number of labels that I have uh, already accumulated for trailer truck. And it, in this demo, we actually uh, have done this a few times. So now on the, on the left, you'll see this count increase to about 350 uh, labels for trailer truck. And we didn't have to draw a single bounding box. We leveraged the uh, power of AI in, that has already indexed our data to find all the vehicles and the power of search to surface that data. And then we just say that this is the, the thing we're interested in, it's called the trailer truck. And now you'll see that uh, when we talk about in light, how we can make use of all those labels to train models. So in light is the training platform built into Clarify. It allows you to quickly train models very easily. You don't have to be an AI expert. You don't have to tune a bunch of knobs and the accuracy is out of the box, best in class. And we do that by uh, providing a combination of pre-trained models. These are models where we put a lot of energy into making very accurate. And then we allow you to create additional models that might be fixed function building blocks, uh, 
quickly trainable models and then deep trained models for new domains. And we're very excited to uh, talk about today that you now have the ability, if you have your own pre-built models, to upload them into the Clarify platform. So this will allow you to run uh, predictions on them and eventually evaluate those models all in the same platform. So whether you're using our Enlight product suite to train the models or you've trained them on your own, you can upload them and, and run them in the same platform. Um, when you do train in our platform, we have a lot of functionality around that. You can leverage the context of these pre-trained models to learn things quickly. You can learn new domains uh, like trailer trucks you'll see in a second. And everything is tracked, which is really important. It's just like software engineering. When you make a change, you want to commit it so that you can run a change in production while you're developing the next uh, few versions. You can also evaluate every one of those versions. So your new version, your model might not actually be better than your previous version. You need to know that. So we have quantitative evaluation metrics that you can uh, execute at a click of a button. And all these functional building blocks you'll see towards the end of the talk today are really powerful at combining artificial intelligence with simple functionality to make complex workflows possible. As you're building these models, we want to build collaboration into the process. So all your collaborators can train models with you. You can track research across your organization. And this quickly uh, speeds up the iteration process. You don't have to share things in, in separate notebooks and stuff like that. Uh, you can have quick innovation and iterate on your ideas uh, very easily in one platform. We also make that very scalable. So you don't have to think about how to manage the machines under the platform, how to kick off training jobs. All of that is handled seamlessly. You fire off a job and you're notified when it's done. You even get progress bars as it's making progress throughout the training uh, run. And then, as I mentioned, you can evaluate these models quantitatively. But with our model, which you'll hear about in a second, all these models are automatically deployed. So you can evaluate them uh, qualitatively as well. On new data, you can see how they're performing, make some tweaks, and repeat the process. So with these pre-trained models, here's some examples that are uh, provided by Clarify out of the box. These have been trained on millions of images and videos to make sure that you have a highly accurate model for common use cases. And you can get up and running with these literally in seconds after signing up. But it doesn't stop there. We find that the customization on top of these models is where people get the most benefit. It might be moderating particular aspects of their business, uh, how they care about it, which is different than our pre-built moderation model. It might be classifying their product catalog, which is different than our pre-built apparel detectors or, or general models. So customization is really key. And we provide two ways of customizing. Context training is the way of taking these pre-trained models, leveraging all the context that they know about in the world, and very quickly learning something new. And when we talk about very quickly, we're talking about 100 times faster than anything else we've seen. It's literally seconds you can learn things. And with very few examples, it starts with one. You can use one example to learn something brand new. And when you think about it, this is kind of how uh, a child uh, learns once they, they get a little bit older, they have context about the world, they can learn something new. An adult definitely learns this way. Deep training is really when you don't have that context. It might be a new domain, a new use case where you don't already have a pre-trained model that you can leverage its context for. This allows you to train classifiers, detectors, and embedding models from scratch. And this, uh, these models that you train within deep training can then be used as context for context-based training. So you can use them to quickly fine tune and iterate on, and you can use them for visual similarity search. So you can say that in this new domain, we think these things are similar and power search experiences like that trailer truck you just saw. So let's take a look at how Enlight works for training complex models. So all of the data that you just saw uh, that we labeled, uh, should be available now to train on. All these uh, bounding boxes that we've designated are trailer trucks. We have 353 here, as you see on the left. We want to now train a model to customize that vehicle detector to not just say vehicle, but to now say a trailer truck. And we have all these, uh, these complex workflows built right into uh, Explorer here so you can see what's happening. Here you show uh, that this image has been labeled. That's what the green check boxes were. And here's a workflow that takes the vehicle detector, uh, thresholds very confident vehicles, crops them out, and then runs it through our general model. Now our general model, if you were to use it directly like that in this workflow, 
you can see it crops it out and then classifies high level things like transportation system, vehicle, truck, et cetera. But we want to just train a very accurate uh, trailer truck model. So this other workflow has done just that, where we've done a similar uh, thing where we detect vehicles, crop them out, embed them with our general model, and then have a custom vehicle classifier you can see here, and a thresholder that says anything above 90% confident we're going to show. So here, this is only recognizing that custom concept trailer truck and showing that we can predict it very accurately. So that's context-based training based on the general model embeddings and recognizing a new concept. Now, if you have this quickly trained model, you should be able to use it to automate some annotations to get a lot more data annotated to maybe train a deep trained model. So that's what we're showing here. And this is what a breakout session is gonna be about uh, in the afternoon on active learning workflows, setting up these auto annotation workflows. Here, we're taking that vehicle classifier when it's very confident, we're gonna write it. There's these model types called annotation writers, which very simply take the data and write it to the database. So whenever a very confident trailer truck is recognized, we're going to treat that as ground truth data. Now, all that data can be run through and automatically annotated. So we have a huge collection of data. That's where deep training can then be leveraged. Learning from a big amount of data, you get a view like this where you can configure a bunch of different parameters in deep training, like number of iterations through the data, learning rate, batch size, all the typical things you uh, care about as a data scientist. And deep training is going to learn from the pixels all the way up to those trailer truck bounding boxes to be able to recognize just that. Once it's trained, you'll see that it's essentially taken that workflow where we detect vehicles, crop them out, embed them, uh, cl uh, custom classify them, and collapse it down into this one model that you just saw. It's a trailer truck detection model. And it's predicting just trailer trucks. You no longer see all these vehicles anymore. And it was predicting it with high accuracy. So that's the, the power of having the context-based classifiers to learn something new based on the, the context of vehicles very quickly, use that to automatically annotate a big amount of data, and then deep train a model. Uh, and you'll see in the talks later, this deep train model is actually a lot faster than running that, uh, that workflow with custom training. Uh, so there's the benefits both on speed and accuracy as your data set sizes uh, increase with deep training. Now you've trained all these great models. And you might have trained them outside of Clarify's platform as well. But how do you run prediction on these models at scale? That's where Armada comes in. We just talked about this at NVIDIA's GPC conference, and we're very excited to talk about it here officially under the Armada name. The purpose of this is to do 24-7 AI predictions with no DevOps. You don't have to think about deploying models ever again. You don't have to have multiple teams involved from data science to engineering to infrastructure engineering. It's just all handled for you. And the way it works is we monitor the amount of inbound requests to each model within our API. And this could be literally thousands of models. As we see more requests to models, we increase the number of replicas of that model. If we see less requests, we decrease the number of instances. So this allows you to scale up infinitely to as much traffic as the models need to, to handle and save costs. When a model's not used, it literally goes down to zero replicas. You're no longer paying for machines, for models that you want to use once in a while, um, and you don't have to do any manual effort to do this. When you have a model, model instance on a machine, it's also using a highly optimized runtime to maximize GPU utilization of each of the replicas of the models. And this runtime supports multiple different frameworks, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Onyx, TensorRT, most of the popular frameworks are built right in. So if you're uploading a third-party model, it's very likely that it'll run directly in Armada without any changes. And this is really powerful because now you can combine, especially with workflows, uh, pre-trained models from us, pre-trained models from you, models built in the, in the platform itself, and serve them without having to maintain them. You also uh, get the benefits of uh, not having to throw the model over the fence to another team. And this is something we hear over and over from data science teams. They build really awesome models, but then they talk about the process of sending it to an engineering team to make the model production ready. Every model is production ready in the Clarify platform, and there's no button to even deploy it. It's automatically deployed. You never have to think about deployment again. So that allows you to rapidly scale up your predictions and your innovation. So let's take a look at a real world example. This is actually Datadog Metrics, um, which is a monitoring tool we use for our systems. And on the top left, you're seeing prediction requests to a variety of different models. 
you're seeing uh, the blue, purple, yellow are different models and uh, a pretty difficult pattern to recognize uh, step function increase in the number of requests. Below that, our model automatically reacts to this, scales up the number of model instances for the blue model the most, the purple model a little bit, and so forth. On the top right, you're seeing during that scale up process, the first few requests are gonna have higher latency because it might've been a model in kind of cold storage, not getting any requests. So it gets loaded for the first time. Loading from disk takes a few seconds uh, at most kind of 10 to 15 you're seeing on the plot here. And then on the bottom right, you're actually seeing it's not just about replicas, everything scales under the hood. The number of pods of our Mata servers scales up and the number of nodes in the cluster scales up. So if you keep getting more and more requests, the, the cluster is just gonna get bigger and bigger and handle them uh, without you ever having to think about the infrastructure behind that ever again. That's the power of Armada. And you'll see that actually uh, in, in practice, right in Explorer. If you go and look at this trailer truck detector that we just deeply trained, you'll see the first time, if it hasn't been used in a while, it'll have a little loading window that you just saw there. And in a few seconds, it'll load that model and serve requests. If you go to the next image, it'll be almost instantaneous. Within 100, 200 milliseconds, the typical prediction times, you'll get uh, responses back for your request. So this is the dynamic loading in practice right here in Portal. Now, our mod is built for the cloud where you have thousands of models and thousands of machines at your disposal. Flare is built for the trillions of devices out there in the world that surround us. And bringing artificial intelligence onto these out, uh, lightweight devices in the field. And we wanna manage that whole experience from cloud to edge seamlessly. So you can build these powerful models using all the best in class labeling tools, search, training, and deployment tools in the cloud, but then run them on the edge so that you actually get predictions on uh, even in online mode and offline mode, wherever your uh, problem might be. And this could be different types of devices, mobile devices, it could be machines, robots, et cetera, uh, intelligent uh, IoT cameras, et cetera. And it's not just about deploying the model out to the edge, it's also about getting feedback from the, the edge to improve that model. So data that is uh, being predicted on could be collected back into the cloud to make future versions of your model better. Um, just like you can predict uh, with Armada and collect that data back into your apps. So this opens up a whole suite of new applications. Uh, we work on applications like predictive maintenance, where the goal is to lower your operational costs by recognizing things ahead of time, problems like defects or cracks, so that you can repair them before it becomes a more serious problem. Quality control and manufacturing lines to improve the throughput and the quality of the things that are being built across the entire supply chain. Safety, uh, as you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic, recognizing face masks and other PPE, recognizing social distance, or even in uh, regular times, environments like construction. It's very important you're wearing hard hats, you're away from heavy equipment, et cetera. And then there's customer experience. It could be logging in automatically or loyalty programs, or even just understanding your customers in any physical space. So with our model, we're gonna continue this, this uh, example of the trailer truck. We trained it in the cloud, and here we're running it on a drone. So here, this is actually a video we captured uh, just this week, and we're recognizing a trailer truck out there in the wild from drones. And this is not just running a detector, it's actually tracking that same trailer truck. That's why you see track ID zero at the top of the bounding box. It can follow any trailer truck, including multiple in the, in the overall scene, and follow that specific truck around. So this could enable experiences like this drone then takes flight and follows that specific truck down the road uh, and so forth. So we're very excited about Flare and opening up the edge possibilities with the Clarify platform. Finally, I'm gonna wrap up by talking about mesh. And this is the idea of multimodal workflows. Workflows have become uh, a very easy way to do complex things in the Clarify platform. And it's very uh, simply described as building blocks uh, that express uh, complex business logic. And these building blocks can be arranged into any arbitrary graph of computation. You can literally specify for this block, I want the input to be the output of this block. And under the hood, we've optimized it very thoroughly so that the processing is very efficient and done in parallel across all the nodes of the, the workflow graph. We also handle a lot of convenient features for you. Like if you have a detection model that outputs regions, 
of concepts, we can actually feed them into a concept model and we handle the, the flattening of regions and renesting them for you. So you can actually compose more flexible input and output types very easily in the workflow tool. And it's not just AI models. What makes workflows really powerful is combining AI models with filtering, with tracking, like you just saw, email, uh, SMS alerts, Slack notifications, and even we have a customizable block. So you can do serverless computation with arbitrary code that you write and do it securely in our platform. So this could be your own processing or even calling third-party APIs. And you'll actually see that mesh is used throughout our platform. It's how data is indexed, which you'll see a few examples of in a second. It's how data gets collected from models that are being predicted on. And this is really important to prevent data drift and improve your AI continuously. It's how data gets automatically annotated when it's uploaded. We want to automate that process to reduce human time and costs. It's how we can build two-stage detectors like you saw with the context-based trailer truck. It's even how you'll see in a second how to build uh, workflows across multiple modalities from image and video understanding to natural language processing. So I'm going to walk you through a few of those examples. In terms of indexing, I showed you a lot of examples today about indexing objects but the same applies to indexing faces. So if you make the workflow in your app a face recognition workflow, you can now understand the faces in your data. So here it's gonna detect, you can see it's a face workflow, it's gonna detect the faces, and then it's gonna understand them at a high level so that you can compare them and find visually similar people. So you see other shots in my data set of the same guy automatically. I didn't have to label him, I don't even know his name, it doesn't matter. We have a high level of representation of the face and we can find visually similar people. And with space-time search, this applies across both uh, images as the query and uh, videos as the uh, uh, index data and vice versa. So here we have a, a video and we see a gentleman that walking in that uh, we think we've seen before. So let's uh, take a look. We've found all the faces in the picture. We see the gentleman in the back and we're gonna um, not just look in this app, which is a bunch of the, the customer video stream data, but we wanna see if this is actually a member. So we look in a different app of member photos and do that search. And sure enough, we've seen this person before. They're actually registered in our member system. So this could be a loyalty program. It could be a check-in system. We found this person and we don't even care what their name is. The opposite is true as well. So here, uh, we might start with that member photo. We find that gentleman again, and we wanna search out of all the, the different uh, cameras we have set up in our environment to see if we've seen this person before or how often we've seen them. Get some analytics on this person. Uh, again, we don't really care what their name is. Uh, we can do this without uh, uh, any type of information about the person. So here we're gonna take that member photo and then search the video stream data. And we automatically find at every point in time within the video streams that we've recorded, uh, where we see this person present. When you see those search results, you actually see the, the point in time within the videos where we found him. And so this is the power of indexing with a, a workflow that understands faces combined with space-time search capabilities. Now, if we do know that person, we can combine it with uh, in light to learn how to recognize them. So here, uh, his name might be Dave Burns. We've collected some examples of him, labeled them Dave Burns. This could be that member photo as well as a few of those video streams. And then with space-time search, we can search over our collection of member photos, customer photos, video streams, and so forth to find that person by name. So that's the power of indexing with face uh, workflows. Now, I wanna introduce the concept of collectors. And you'll learn more about this in the active learning workshop later today. The idea of collectors is very simple. You have a model running in production through our model. You want to get uh, the, that real world data that's being predicted on back into an app in order to train the next version of that model to be even better. This is crucial for problems like data drift where things change over time. You need to get the real world data back into your app. So in this scenario, we're gonna set up a random sampling model. This is one of those fixed function building blocks you just heard about. And we're gonna put it into a workflow, a very simple workflow where it's the only model in this workflow because all I care about is sampling some of the data into my app. So we're just gonna make up a name for the workflow, add that one random sampling model, and that's all this workflow is gonna do. Then we're gonna go and create a collector. And so a collector has a few different configuration uh, parameters. Uh, ID and description, so you remember what it is. 
And then the workflow that we're going to run whenever we get a prediction on a piece of data, we're going to send that prediction into this workflow. In this case, we're going to select the random sampling workflow that just takes all the data and puts it into the app. And then we have to have a uh, API key. And this is because we're essentially acting on your behalf to add this data into the app. So it's exactly the same as if you posted the input to the app yourself. And then finally, we pick the, uh, the model that we want to listen on. So we're going to listen on that trailer truck model and get any of the predictions that it's running on into the app. So when we refresh here, you can see it's actually collected new data without me having to write any code, make any API calls, and it's collected the real data that I care about for my problem that I'm actually making predictions on into this app. Now, that's a huge uh, win because you can get data into your app and the important data. Now, if you combine it with a different use case of mesh, auto annotation workflows, it becomes incredibly powerful. So auto annotation is the idea that you have a model already trained. You want to trust its predictions that are very confident and only send a fraction of the predictions that are less confident to a human to review. And all this works seamlessly together. Here, we just uploaded uh, some pictures. We have a model that recognizes construction workers. And we have uh, a workflow set up that writes to this labeler task. You can see the status here is mentioned as ongoing. This is because it, the system recognizes that we have these annotation writing models that write to the database whenever uh, it gets data. And if you have that associated with a labeler task, we're going to keep that task open forever because we expect more data to be automatically annotated. When I go into the labeler view, I get to see that all these boxes that are already populated in here, those came from the construction worker model that made these predictions. And in this example, you see that one of the people are actually uh, not detected. So the human doing this work can add that additional box and submit it. So they did maybe a, a one tenth of the work that would normally be required. And then as they're going through the other examples, they can quickly review and do a scan if there's any other construction workers to do the work orders of magnitude faster than they would do uh, if they had to manually annotate these images. When you're done, you can have reviewers in the process as well uh, reviewing these things on an ongoing basis. So auto annotation automatically annotates the data, collectors gets data into your app. Uh, very powerful because it completes the cycle of active learning within the platform. Now I'm going to wrap up with some natural language processing announcements. So we just launched natural language processing in the last couple of months. We have the ability to customize it just like you saw with uh, image and video to make custom classification for sentiment analysis, topic analysis, even smart reply type of use cases. We can moderate out text just like we moderate out images and video. But with mesh, you can combine all these things. Maybe you want to actually recognize text in the images, run it through uh, to understand what that text is, and then classify it with any of the custom classifiers that we can do. We fully support this in our platform through Mesh's multimodal workflows. So let's take a look at that. This is really fun. So here we have a example where we want to moderate out images like this. They might be billboards. They might be uh, pictures of text, anything like that. So we're going to actually build a workflow, uh, starting with one of the, the pre-built workflows we have here that does visual detection. It's going to detect where text is. Whenever it detects a region of text, it's going to crop it out. And then it's going to translate that text, the pixels of the text, into actual characters of text. And then we're going to aggregate all that text from all the regions. It's going to kind of read each of the bounding boxes, top left to bottom right. So it'll append them into a single sentence. And then we're going to send that sentence of text through our text moderation model. So this is a pre-built Clarify model. As you can see with Mesh, you can mix and match custom models from your application and Clarify's applications. So we're going to add as that final step the text moderation model and then create the workflow. And here it's going to show you that you can actually chain together uh, these in arbitrary graphs. In this case, it's kind of a linear graph. Uh, but if you had a more complex uh, application, you could chain it together in any arbitrary graph. Now we're going to show the results of this new workflow. So it detects the text. Each of those things gets cropped. Then they're translated from pixels into characters. We append them all together, and then we moderate it out to finally say this is toxic and insulting and somewhat obscene. So that is multimodal workflows built directly into a Clarify platform with just a few clicks. We've never seen this before, and I hope uh, you're going to build some really incredible applications with it. So today, you saw this entire platform all seamlessly integrated. 
you saw we jumped around from labeling data with Scribe to searching over that data with space time, training models within light, running those at production scale with Armada, even running on the edge with Flare, and then wrapping up with complex business logic in Mesh. And it runs wherever your business needs it to run. So we're, we're very excited to announce all these new products and showcase them, how they work seamlessly together. We'll have two breakout sessions to go dive deep into these at 11.45 and 3 p.m. And I want to thank you for joining us today, uh, not just for this keynote, but throughout the day, you're going to see incredible talks from all of our invited speakers. Thank you again to our speakers for joining us today. And you can follow along on social media, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn with the hashtag Perceive2020. All right. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day.